I became interested in writing about the Lenape Indians, also known as the Delaware Indians, when my dad learned while working on our family tree that we had an ancestor born in 1700 who was a Lena Lenape woman. I met Strong Medicine herself on a beautiful spring day in 2005 in the sacred circle at the tribe's private grounds in Fairton, New Jersey. I was introduced to her by her son, the chief of the tribe. Strong Medicine grew up in Cumberland County, New Jersey. She's part of the Nanticoke Lena Lenape Indian tribe. Strong Medicine's tribe were what is called a hidden people. They hid their identity to prevent being sent to a reservation against their will in the West or in Canada, as so many Lena Lenape Indians were. In Strong Medicine's life, the tribe has come full circle. They're part of a national movement that many people are not aware of, the Indian Civil Rights Movement, and the cultural movement called Native Pride. Starting in the 1970s, her tribe, along with many others throughout the U.S., began to assert their rights and to embrace their identity. Strong Medicine is one of the long line of strong Lenape women. She was given her name by the chief, her son, because of her no-holds-barred personality and also because of her knowledge of plants and herbs. She is a traditional healer and one of her favorites is a plant called poke root. How do you do that again? You take the bulb, you take the root. Yeah, well, it's the bulb and the root. Right. It depends right. on how big right. the thing is, if it's a small one, fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, you take it, you clean it, and, you know, make sure it's all, all scrubbed with a brush. And then you uh, make um, a poultice with vinegar and maybe if you want honey, you can do it with vinegar and warm water. And put that in a glass dish and when you put that in a glass dish you want to have everything all shredded you put that all in all there it gets heated yeah, and then by the time grandma decides you know hey it's ready because it has to cool off enough so you don't burn someone and uh, uh, while, while you're doing that um, take an old sheet or a pillowcase or something like that if it's clean and whatnot and you take it and strip it and wrap the things around it and fasten it up so you can't get out because I know with Billy's boy Mark he was only going to do his feet but he had such a fever that we did his head and feet and everything <laughs> everything else there was and and uh, and uh, uh, broke the fever and everything, and he was in good shape after that. The Nabi women were unusually powerful. While they did do traditional crafts, such as beadwork, they had an unusual amount of say in what happened within the tribe. In fact, traditionally, Lenape men could not go to war without the approval of the women first. Strong Medicine and I have become great friends and we have a wonderful time together. With this book, she's gone way beyond what a traditional elder would do. She is sharing her advice, observations, and stories with the world. It is extremely unusual for an elder to speak to the outside world, especially about being Indian and the prejudice and ridicule faced by Indians in their lifetime. She's 85 years old now, and her sons are in their 60s, but she still refers to them as the boys. When Mark was growing up, did you have any idea that he might ever become the leader of the tribe, the chief of the tribe? No, I had no idea. 
What was he like as a little boy? Ordinary as a dickens. <laughs> Both of them. So you were uh, a disciplinarian, more or less. You you didn't you didn't let that Billy and Mark and Jeff get away with anything, huh? I let them be boys. <laughs> so that's the name. <laughs> I let them be boys because you can't take them and. I don't think that you should take a child and or children and nail them down someplace. What I love about her is her sense of humor, her honesty, and the fact that she simply is who she is. And I admire her for speaking out and sharing her opinions, stories, and observations with the world.